Hello. Today I wanted to do a video on uh, diode volts drop. And a lot of people assume wrongly that common diodes have got certain volts drop. Now I'm not going to be talking about small signal diodes. I'm more concerned with power diodes. I mean, for instance, a ger germanium is traditionally 0.3 volts. But that's a small signal diode. You're not going to put a lot of current through that. It's just used in radio receivers and detectors, that sort of thing. And um, silicon, of course, most people are taught at school, college, whatever, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts drop on a silicon diode, which is, as we shall see, not always the case. And now, more recently, in the last few years, Shakti diodes, and I can't spell Shakti, I had to look it up. That's how bad my English is, um, never mind. And these have become much more common now that nowadays with the advent of switch mode power supplies. Because they uh, will work at high, much higher frequencies than a silicon will. So, generally, you can talk about 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 volts drop on a Shakti diode. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to use some power diodes, and I've missed one of them out. I've drawn the different diodes I'm going to test. Got to write this one in. 1N5408. I think it's 3 amps, but I'm not sure about that. It might be 5 amps, can't remember. But anyway, I want to test these diodes at various currents to show you the forward volts drop across them. So let me just rig up my test instruments. First of all I'll just test with their multimeter on diode test mode. We'll see what we get. Okay so first one I'm going to test is uh, 1N4004, very boring little diode I think that means it's got a PIV of 500 volts. But been around for years. Silicon diode, obviously. And as you can see, we got 0.6 volts. So I'm going to quickly write that down. Much as you expect, 0.6 volts drop. So, okay. Next one is uh, this big 25 amp bridge rectifier. And of course that uses silicon diodes because it's just used for um, mains frequencies. And I can get the clips to stay on. Okay, well that's even lower. 0.54 volts. So I'll write that down. Right, 0.54 volts on that one. So, what's the next one? Oh yeah, the 1N5408, which I think is a 1000 volts PIV. I think it's 3 amps, but it might be 5 amps. But later on I'm going to stuff 5 amps through it, whether it likes it or not. Okay, so that's much the same as the last one. At um, 0.55 volts. Typical silicon diode. Right, and the last one is a power Shakti diode. Don't know what the PIV is, don't really care, but I do know it's 20 amps because I used it in a power supply. Well, I used several of them. Okay, so on, on that one you get more or less what I expected. Um, 0.27 call it 0 0.28, 0 0.28 volts. Right, fine. So you think, that's exactly what you expect to get on these diodes. Well now I'm going to put them in the real world. I'm going to shove some amps through them and we'll see what we get then. So I'll just reconfigure. Let me test that up. I've got a power supply over there. It's capable of producing about 20, 20 amps if necessary. 
I've got my electronic load which I'm going to use as to load the output after the diode and multimeter to measure the voltage drop across the diode and at the moment I've got the smallest one in there the 4004 and I'm going to stick just check my uh, load well I've got my load set to 1 amp which is the absolute maximum for a diode like that and even then <coughs> I think that's only rated at that current at 25 degrees so these tests have to be fairly quick in order not to blow up the diode so I turn my load on then I'm drawing 1 amp and what do we have on the multimeter now? we've got 0.9 volts 0.9 volts so that's quite a bit of difference between what we were measuring before and I have to turn off because that diode is not happy it's getting rather warm I don't mind if I kill it but uh, it's always good to, to try and not kill components if possible so that shows you the difference doesn't it when you put an amp through a diode like that you had an extra point three volts drop on it compared to the multimeter which is just using a test current of a milliamp or two probably so the next one we're going to test is the 25 amp bridge rectifier so I'll just reconfigure myself okay bridge rectifier is installed and like the previous diode I'm only going to check start off the check at one amp and of course I'm not testing all the diodes in there, there's four obviously but they'll all be fairly similar so one amp 0.9 volts drop okay still a lot more than what it was when I tested it with the meter but with this particular bridge rectifier because it's 25 amp I need to increase my current and I'm going to take it up first of all to 10 amp now what have we got? We've got one volt drop. So that is double what it was testing with an altimeter. 0.54 volts it was testing before. And I think I can go a bit higher than that before my electronic load shuts down. It's rated at 200 watts. So I might get to 15 amps or so. Okay, 15. I got to 16 amps. And now I'm up to 1.13. So I call it 1.1 volts at 15 amps. Now that's a hell of a difference between the 0.54 that I was measuring before with the meter. Just turn this off and it's gone into, it's tripped out. It's tripped out because it was near the total power. So what, that's what you have to think about when you're designing power supplies. Um, in the old days, when I was making power supplies, you've got to think about the volts drop on this, and not take any notice of what you're taught about 0 0.6, 0 0.7. It's way over a volt. And that, of course, is time. There'll be two dyes condu conducting at any one time in a bridge rectifier. So that's going to lead to um, a lot of heat at high current and a lot of voltage drop over 2 volts drop normally when you're running that bridge rectifier at high currents so it's just something I came across when I was making linear power supplies years, years ago that were for amateur radio stuff that needed 20 amps or 25 amps <coughs> ok next diode what's the next diode? have I, have I lost it? no there it is Ok, next diode is the 1N5408 which I think is either 3 or 5 amp, I can't remember but I'm going to start it off at 1 amp I know you can't see the load properly because of the how the display interacts with the camera so I turn that on and I'm already up to 0.83 volts at 1 amp which is a fair bit really for 1 amp if I turn that up a bit Go up to let's go up to five amps. So I have to point nine for that. So we can say that's a point nine amp, nine volt. I mean, point eight six, point nine. 
and the diode is red hot. Turn that off. So, yeah, not such a dramatic difference as on the bridge rectifier, but then again, I was testing that, I had much more current, so that would explain that one. Right, I'll just reconfigure and I'll test the uh, Shakti diode. Okay, I've just connected over the shock T and I've clamped him in a vice because I know the poor little thing's going to overheat. Because I want to test that as high as I can up to probably about 15 amps. So I should take most of the heat away for a short test. And once again, I'm going to start off at uh, 1 amp. Okay, so now that is nearly, well, 0.48. So it's already gone up considerably from the 0.28 that I was measuring with the meter. Right, let's take him up a bit. Take him up to 10 amps. It's a 20 amp diode. Right, so now we're up to a hell of a lot more. It's almost like a silicon diode drop. 0.73 volts at 10 amps. Right, let's go further if we can. So the power load shuts down. I can get it to 16 amps. That's just it. 0.76 volts. I'm going to write that down. 0.76 volts for the shock T. And that's the end of the testing. Turn that off. Diode is extremely hot. But I don't think I've killed him. I'm sure I haven't. I'll just get rid of all this now. Yeah, he's cooling down nicely. <coughs> so what can we conclude from all this? I think the most interesting one was the um, the Shakti diode, which is a 20 amp diode. And as you can see, there's a massive difference between 0.28, I was measuring on the... Uh, diode test on the multimeter to 0 0.76 volts but it's still a lot lower than the silicon but um, this is all stuff you have to think about I suppose when you're designing power supplies because the more volts drops you get the more power you're wasting and the hotter the diode is going to get so that's about it really um, I'm just um, it does annoy me slightly when people talk about typical volts drops for, for silicon diodes, whatever. Because you, do, you need to test them at a certain low current to, before you can say what the volts drop's going to be. Anyway, that's enough of that, and bye for now.